Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to DNews Plus. Yet again today, I am Trace, and this is episode four of five on our series of formation. We actually have a special episode coming tomorrow, so please subscribe right here so that you get that episode. So far in this series, we've talked about one, how we used to be called Test2 Plus, now we're called DNews Plus. You're welcome. But also how humans got here, how Earth formed, how solar systems formed, how galaxies have formed. This is a series on formation after all. But today we're gonna get as big as we possibly can based on human knowledge, the universe. How did the universe form? Let's kick into it. The universe is everything we can see and as far as we can see. It's all matter, antimatter, energy, everything. Today, the universe is believed to be about 10 billion light years in diameter, but 13.7 billion years ago, 13.8 billion years ago, it was basically nothing, it was nothing. And then the Big Bang happened. The Big Bang is something you've likely heard of, not just because of the television series that's fairly successful, but the Big Bang is the term scientists use to describe the initial formation of the universe. You've definitely heard of it. It is one of the most famous theories in science, you know, that like evolution. It's a theory, not a hypothesis. There's evidence to show it's real. There's mathematical models and theories and physics and observations of the universe and everything essentially in the Big Bang theory makes sense for the most part. There are some things that are not congruous with what we know, but we're not gonna get into that too much because that's you know kind of a different thing. But in the beginning, everything in the universe collapsed into a single mega dense point. And before that, we don't know what was going on. We have ideas, which we'll get to later, but we don't really know. And we can't study that mega dense point because we were part of it. Everything was in there. Then the big bang happened and it wasn't a little dot anymore, exploded outward. In a trillionth of a trillionth of a second, it was the whole universe. <laughs> but it was only one times 10 to the 33rd centimeters, like the decimal points rather. Decimal, then 33 zeros, then a one. That was how big it got in a trillionth of a trillionth of a second. That's really small. <laughs> It's also really, really hot because it's all the matter and energy in the universe in that one tiny little 33 zeros in a one of a centimeter. It's 10 to the 32 degrees Kelvin. So 32 zeros after a one Kelvin. Essentially at this point, matter and energy are the same. They're indistinguishable from each other. In far less time than it takes to just blink your eye, the universe blew up by a hundred trillion trillion times in size. And then it cooled and it expanded and it cooled and it expanded. You're gonna hear that a lot. And it's called inflation theory. As the trillionths of a second ticked by, matter and energy cooled off enough to separate from each other. And matter and antimatter were created. Think of a hydrogen atom where the middle is positive and the electron is negative. That's how we have hydrogen right now. And antimatter would be the opposite of that. And at the beginning, it was half and half, 50% matter, 50% antimatter. We don't see much antimatter today because for some reason there was slightly more matter. And when they come in contact, they annihilate each other and create energy. There's also something called baryogenesis because matter that you can perceive, that we can see, the matter right here, this is baryonic matter. And then that only comprises today 4.6% of the universe. Though at the time, it was still subatomic. There were no actual matter particles yet. Also at this moment, just trillionths of trillionths of a second after the Big Bang began, dark matter and dark energy are created. Things that we don't understand yet. We can't perceive them. 26.8% of all matter is dark matter and 68.3% of all energy is dark energy. We don't know anything about it, so we call it dark energy. Recreating this today are people in the Large Hadron Collider in Europe and in particle accelerators all over the world, they try and recreate the conditions right after the Big Bang. When they say that, this is what they're trying to simulate. So at that point, more trillionths of a second tick by and cools and expands and cools and expands. We have hot soups of particles, which probably sounds familiar from earlier. At 0.01 seconds, which is an eternity when you're looking at trillionths, cosmologists take over, they show up and they're like, okay, particle physicists, we'll take it from here. We got it, everybody because at that point, the baryonic matter starts to coalesce and bond in a process called nucleosynthesis. It forms hydrogen, the simplest matter that we know of. It's one proton and one electron. But let's not get ahead of ourselves because the electrons can't show up yet. So instead, it's actually deuterium, one proton and one neutron. We also get helium. Then 
It cools and expands and cools and expands. And a hundred seconds later, after the Big Bang, the temperature of the universe, the entire universe, is 10 to the 9th Kelvin, or about 1 billion degrees Celsius. Electrons are there, and so are positrons, the antimatter version. And they're annihilating each other, and when that happens, they're making photons. But it's still too hot for them to orbit a proton. They're too energized. Light hasn't actually escaped, even though photons are being created. At the time, 100 seconds after the Big Bang, scientists believed the universe was opaque. You couldn't see it. You couldn't see anything. This is called the Cosmic Dark Ages, and it goes on for quite a while. Light is caught inside of this universe bubble because it's a billion degrees Celsius. It's really, really hot. At this point, matter has started to be created, so we've got three quarters hydrogen, one quarter helium by mass, and photons and other particles, you know, dark matter and so on. So then it cools and expands, and it cools and expands, and we've got a month after the Big Bang. It's cooled and expanded, and gravity is starting to slow everything down just a little bit. And particles are beginning to be able to emit radiation. The reason is it's starting to slow down, and the radiation can move faster than the expansion of the universe. 56,000 years after the Big Bang, the universe is pretty big. I mean, it's pretty huge and it's at 9,000 Kelvin. Dark matter starts to kind of collapse on itself, and things that were incongruous in dark matter start to come together. This seems to me, this is my opinion, kind of like physicists being like, and also dark matter did some stuff. We don't really know anything about it, so it's really hard to say what it did, but we know it did something. 380,000 years after the Big Bang, that's the sweet spot. Of course, by the way, I just sidebar for a minute. We're talking about this in years and seconds. That's all Earth time, which is really funny because we wouldn't even show up for 9.2 two, two billion years or something. So we're categorizing this all by the amount of time it takes the Earth to go around the sun, but that doesn't really matter when you're talking about this universe scale stuff. Isn't that funny? It's kind of presumptuous. No, Earth, come on. Anyway, so it cooled enough that at 380,000 years after the Big Bang, it was about 300 Kelvin, electrons begin to pair with atoms, which means all of these ions, all of these hydrogen and deuterium, these positively charged atoms could now grab an electron and become neutral. They are no longer charged. And that means the radiation that had been trapped there forever so far could escape. This was theorized in the 1940s and accidentally discovered in 1965. Another quick sidebar here. We were building this radio telescope, we being scientists. They were building this radio telescope, I think in like New Jersey, and there was this anomaly in their data and they weren't really sure what was going on. They thought maybe pigeons were pooping on their antenna and messing everything up. So they went out there, they killed the pigeons, but the anomaly was still there. Turned out they had discovered the afterglow of the Big Bang. This was in 1965. They call this the cosmic microwave background radiation. It's everywhere in the universe, and it's left over as an imprint from the Big Bang. Essentially, it's the energy patterns from the Big Bang on a quantum scale that have grown and grown and grown and grown over time. So the quantum scale particles were imprinted on this CMB and it's kind of like standing at the bottom of a pool. It's everywhere around us. We can't escape it, but we didn't know it was there. And now, if we look at it, it's grown and grown and grown. So these are things that, let me think of it like a movie projector. It's projecting on the biggest screen imaginable. The size of a particle is the projector. The size of the screen, millions of light years across. That's cosmic microwave background radiation. The quantum fluctuations in the universe moments after it was born are now reflected millions of light years across. It's kind of mind blowing. I mean, really. <laughs> These echoes set up the formation of everything we have today. All matter, all the galaxies, all the planets, all us, Beyonce, everything set up by this fluctuations in particles in the early portions of the Big Bang. And that's the earliest bit of the universe that we can see today. So everything before that is part of the cosmic dark ages, 380,000 years of Big Bang time. We don't really know visibly. We can't detect it in that way. So then, of course, the universe cools and expands and cools and expands. And over the next few hundred million years, the first stars begin to form. Particles start to attract each other into clouds like we've been talking about. Clouds get denser in parts and birth the very first stars, not unlike what's happening in the galaxies and solar systems around the universe today. And about 250 million years to 400 million years, depending on the source you use, after the Big Bang, we get the first 
proto-galaxies. Eventually, they coalesce enough to make the first star. The first stars are 100,000 to a million times more massive than the sun that we have in our solar system today. It's also brighter, it's more luminous, and this changes the universe forever because it's throwing heat around. It's changing how things interact. It's a nuclear furnace. And as it's burning this energy, it's changing the fundamental essence of the universe. Because when you burn fuel in a nuclear capacity, you have to coalesce that energy into something else. It's all done by fusion, right? You're taking two atoms and you're smooshing them into one atom. And eventually the stars are running out of fuel and they're creating sometimes the first supernova, the first black hole. And that's gonna change the universe too. The Big Bang only created hydrogen and helium, maybe lithium, again, depending on the source you look at. Stars were needed to make elements heavier than hydrogen and helium. Hydrogen is one, helium is two, in terms of the no their atomic numbers, the protons they have. So as stars evolve, they take the hydrogen and they make helium with it. Then some of the bigger stars can take helium and turn it into carbon, which is the atomic number of six, and oxygen, the atomic number of eight, and the biggest, the most massive stars, and again, this is over millions, if not billions of years, can take those elements and combine them into other things like silicon all the way up to iron. Stars make iron. This is crazy. But there are limits to fusion. It can't just keep smushing things together until you get to things like uranium and, you know, mercurium and stuff. Instead, supernovae, star explosions, create those heavier elements. And once heavier elements are built by billions and billions and billions of years and lifetimes of stars collecting, collapsing, exploding, we can finally get enough elements in a variety of ways to make solar systems, which we've already talked about. I haven't said it in a while, by the way. Cooled and expanded, cooled and expanded. <laughs> The law of thermodynamics says that that's going to keep happening. We're going to keep cooling. We're going to keep expanding. Gravity is going to hold us together, so we're not just going to fly forever. And it's going to slow down, and it's going to cool off. And then eventually we'll get the heat death of the universe. But that's a whole other thing, so don't worry about it too much. So what was before the Big Bang? <laughs> we don't know. <laughs> we don't really have a clue. There was no sense of time or there's no sense of space because there was, I mean, because there was no time or space, really. There's one study from Oxford that found circles in the CMB, that cosmic microwave background radiation, little concentric circles. And they think that those circles might be from the previous universe, the universe that existed before ours. Supermassive black holes that existed at the end of the previous universe may have caused these circles that they think. They call it an aeon or an eon. One is created, and that's a universe, and then the universe ends, and a new universe is created, that's another eon, and a new universe is created after that eon, and it's cyclical. So once it's created, maybe it collapses, and then creates a new one. And if that didn't blow your mind, then I don't know what will. <laughs> but that's how the sausage is made. That's how everything formed. The sausage, in this case, is the universe, by the way, and you, and me, and our planet, and our solar system, and our galaxy, and Beyonce and producer Brian and producer Blair. But that's not to say stuff isn't really happening right now. You know, it may have been on billion year scales and it might have been proto planets and proto stars and orbits and axes and all of these different things. But there's also really exciting stuff happening in our galaxy right now that we are watching. And that's what our special fifth episode is about. It's about something called cannibal galaxies which is exactly what it sounds like. So make sure you tune in tomorrow for that episode. Subscribe right here below this little video movie picture thing. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Thank you for tuning into DNews Plus this week for our first episode series as our new DNews Plus show. Please let us know what you think. Tell us down in the comments if you have a big topic that you want us to cover. And also come find me over on Twitter. You can find me at Trace Dominguez. Thanks for tuning in.